Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. In this video, I want to go over some things that blew my mind after I got my first software job and started working. There are things that I didn't learn in school and I just wish someone would have told me before I started my first job. If you think you find this interesting, keep watching. The most surprising thing to me when I first got my job was how little time I actually spent writing code. I didn't know that my entire day would consist of me eating free food at the buffet, playing foosball, and just reminding people that their mics were turned off. All right, I'm just kidding. So what I actually didn't realize was that writing code is actually only a small part of the software development life cycle. Given the fact that almost all of my classes in my software development program in school were focused only on programming languages, design patterns, and algorithms, I honestly thought that my job would consist of just hacking away in VS Code for eight hours a day. But that was definitely not the case, thank God, because that would be exhausting. In a typical week, there might be around four to six hours worth of meetings depending on the week. On top of that, once you're actually assigned an issue to work on, you spend at least several hours going back and forth with the UX designer or product manager or your team lead to clarify the requirement. Once you actually get started on the issue, the vast majority of the time on that issue is really time spent reading the code and documentation and planning how to implement the solution. On top of all of that, um, we also do some code reviews, do a lot of manual testing, writing documentation, mandatory team building events. So all in all, I think I spend less than 50% of my time actually writing code, if that. So if all you wanna do is just code all day, every day, uh, you might be disappointed. Now this obviously gets even worse if and when you decide to move up the ranks and become a tech lead or engineering manager, at which point you probably don't code at all. And this is one of the reasons I don't really wanna move into those leadership roles and I wanna stay as an individual contributor. So I should preface this by saying that this is my personal experience and yours might completely differ from mine. But personally, I find working a dev job so much less stressful than going through my software development program in school. The years I've spent learning programming in school were some of the most stressful years of my life. It felt like I was drinking from a fire hose. You're learning something new before you really had the time to understand and digest what you learned previously. To make it worse, each new concept you learned depends on the things that you learned in the previous week. Like you can't really learn React without really understanding JavaScript, right? School was almost like credit card debt. You have one bad month where you fall behind and all of a sudden it snowballs into like a ton of debt. So it's so easy to fall behind. At work, yes, you sometimes do have to learn new frameworks or APIs, but most of the time you're solving the same problems over and over again. Compare that to being in school where every single day you're learning new concepts, you're solving novel problems that you've never seen before, you're constantly being pushed outside of your comfort zone. Whereas at work, you're doing things that you probably already know how to do, so it's a lot less stressful and less mentally taxing. And if you work on a really good team with good managers and there's no toxicity or competition, your coworkers are also there to help you out if you get Get stuck so you're not all alone the way you are in school. I spend a few hours of my week mentoring students at a local coding bootcamp and every cohort I come across at least one or two students that just break down crying because they couldn't keep up with the pace of the program. It was so overwhelming and they were so behind that it was just almost impossible to catch up. Obviously at work there are going to be deadlines and stressful times but in my personal experience there's no one crying all the time and the pace is a lot slower than it was at school. You're not constantly trying to catch up. The third thing that I found pretty surprising was that the code you write in school is nothing like the code that you're going to write at work. For example, in the real world, you're rarely going to run NPM or what was it, MPX create React app and start a project from scratch. At work, you're probably going to be dealing with legacy systems, a billion different edge cases, and just constant feature changes. And I think we already know this by now, but the things you're being tested on during the interview has nothing to do with what you're going to be doing at your day-to-day -day job. When you're doing leak code problems or doing a coding assessment during an interview, you're optimizing for time and space efficiency. I've spent 
about eight or so years in the industry as a full stack software developer. And I can tell you that I have never run into memory issues. That's never really been a problem. Memory relative to other costs, like a software engineer's salary and time is really cheap. I don't really see the point in prematurely optimizing for space or time efficiency if it's going to make your code a lot harder to read and for someone to, you know, refactor and update if there are changes in the future. Like the trade-off isn't really worth it. The vast majority of the time you spend on an issue isn't actually coding, like I mentioned previously, but it's reading other people's code. The best engineers I've worked with wrote code that was easy to read and flexible to future changes because code that's easy to read and maintain saves time, which is ultimately the most precious resource. I'll see some answers on leak code where people brag about how their solution is like four lines long, but who cares if your code is four lines long if it takes three times as long to understand it and it's completely inflexible to future changes. I think there's this misconception that people who work in tech are all these nerds that spend all their free time reading hacker news, building these cool side projects and contributing to an open source library. I always found that stereotype hilarious. Like imagine if we applied the same standards to doctors or lawyers. If you are a rock star doctor, you're expected to be performing heart surgery in your spare time. Like that would be ridiculous, right? I don't understand why the standards for software engineers would be any different. Those people might exist, but thankfully they are in the minority. You don't need to live up to that standard. The vast majority of software engineers that I work with, they work around 40 hours a week like normal people. They go home and they have hobbies that aren't related to tech. I'm not saying to do the bare minimum, but I think especially millennials and Gen Z, we are sick of this hustle culture that dominated tech for a really long time. That being said, if you want to go the extra mile and maybe you're more ambitious with your career trajectory, you might want to spend a few extra hours a week learning a new library or building a side project. But to be honest, like with every job I've personally had, I have found time within the 40 hours a week to brush up on my skills and keep up to date with the industry. So the fifth and most important thing that I wish I knew before I started working is that interview skills are as important as your technical skills. So this might make you cringe, but I really believe that knowing how to interview well and negotiate well is a whole different set of skills that you need to master if you want to land the best offer. I was always under the impression that if you have good technical skills, you're a good programmer, that's enough. And you know, that would come across in the interview. But especially in today's market where there's a bunch of layoffs, there might be a recession in the near, near future. Being able to interview well is that much more important and it could be the key to help you land your first job. By the way, if you're currently in the interview process or you're starting to look for a new job, uh, be sure to check out my video that I'll link here on popular Java script interview question. If you want to land the best offer, you need to start thinking of yourself as a product or service and give people that are interviewing you a compelling reason to hire you. Think about how Apple spends as much money on marketing and branding as they do on research and development. It's because the money that they spend on creating the image of a luxury brand has a massive impact and return on investment. This goes to show you that how you present and package something matters as much as the product. So the same thing kind of goes for the interview. Whether you like it or not, how you present and market yourself has a massive impact on whether or not you land that offer. You gotta think that when you're in an interview, you're essentially in a sales call where the purpose is to find out if there's a good fit between you and the role at the company. You gotta remember that the people that are interviewing you are humans too, right? And people hire people that they like. So you got to present yourself in a way that shows you're going to benefit the company and their lives. By the way, if you're struggling with the interview stage, um, be sure to check out the video I did recently on behavioral questions. I'll link that up there and um, I will see you in the next one. Thanks for watching. Bye.